Care Collab time. Welcome, welcome. Today, joining me for the Care Collab of Vanda Vietnamica, as I got her, Kristen Sonia Vietnamica, is Nicole Diana, Plants and Other Things, and the Orchid Saga. Thank you for joining me on my video, my Care Collab for the Vanda Vietnamica. Well, as I mentioned, I got her as Kristen Sonia Vietnamica, and I just like that name much better, but more knowledgeable scribes than me have allocated her into the Vanda category. On my label, it still says Kristen Sonia. I have both those names on just so that I don't forget. The Kristen Sonia, with regards to this Vietnamica, was actually created specifically for this Vietnamica because she was only discovered in 2012. So relatively new, but in a very short period of time, she was reclassified to Vanda. And she is found in South Vietnam on the eastern coast, where there are semi-deciduous and deciduous forests and in kind of savanna-like woodlands at an elevation of sea level to 700 meters. So, <laughs> ergo, warm to hot growing. So here we go, warm to hot growing, sea level, South Vietnam, that screams humidity at me. And I don't have humidity here in southern Spain where I'm at. And that is why I have mine, even though it's hard to see, in Lekka and self-watering. There is Lekka underneath, but there's also quite the growth of moss now, which I am leaving on. I'm not messing with the moss in the pot at all. That was self-propagated. I had nothing to do with that. That little fern can stay in there as well, because this Vanda clearly doesn't have that many roots in the pot, so there's no need for me to worry about the climate in the pot either. And while we're standing here in full sun with her, I'm just gonna mist her because this is what I do every day, several times a day, just to keep her wet, humid, keep her little microclimate there somewhat agreeable to her needs. Mine has never bloomed for me. I am sorry, I cannot show you pictures. But my goodness, not only is she a small, miniature size growing Vanda, but the blooms are white with chartreuse green, petals and sepals. The lip apparently is white from what I can see from pictures. I'm a huge fan of white and green blooms. Unfortunately, she has not blessed me with blooms yet. I've had her now three years. So the first year for acclimating purposes, I had her in bright shade, no direct sun, in my south facing blooming alley. Okay, so no blooms the first year. Then I thought, right, she's not declining. She's growing quite well because I got her when she was down here and I lost the leaves that were sort of close to the growth point, but that's where it stopped, which is a good thing. I was relieved. Second year, I put her into my east side where there's a lot more light and it gets much, much hotter, even though she doesn't get direct sun. Her color darkened a bit. She had the anthocyanin on her leaves and I thought okay I'll let it be because if she needs more light in order for her to bloom for me then that's what's going to happen. She did not bloom. Year three is where we're at now and I have her again in my blooming alley but more tucked up closer to where the tolumnias are that get a lot of light from the west side even though it is behind a protective curtain but sometimes direct sun, depending on the angle of the sun, earlier in the season and later in the fall, she'll get direct sun. So a little bit of bright shade all day long, mixed with direct sun, depending on the time of year. Still no blooms. And I checked before filming. I'm like, will you surprise me just for this video? Nope. No blooms. She's growing well though. She has tripled in size since I got her. I do spray with seaweed, calcium, magnesium, alternating with MSU fertilizer at 160 parts per million. And when I do that, especially if I've got nutrients in my RO water, I make sure that that is early in the morning while it's still somewhat cool and then the roots won't dry out so quickly and she has time to absorb the nutrients. So basically, the major part of her culture in my climate is foliar spraying with nutrients or without nutrients. If it's a dull day, then I will give her a second application of nutrients, depending whether it's the seaweed CalMag or the MSU, a second application at around noon, and then that would be it for the rest of the day. And when I say a dull day, I mean like cloudy, hazy day, no wind. 
if it's a windy day like today, I have to be super careful and all she gets is RO water and a lot of it, only by misting, as you saw. I do not have the pot filled with anything. Any residual water will drip into the reservoir. I don't have to do much emptying out either because it is only a misting. It is not a full watering. So for the last six to eight weeks, because of the angle of the sun being so much higher in the sky, she has had only bright shade. This is the most sun she's had in the last eight weeks. In the months leading up to now, June, she's had direct sun, probably for about six to seven hours, depending on the sun, but it would penetrate through the trellising. I was hoping that that would be enough light. I guess not. I have as yet to figure out the balancing act. What is it gonna take to get her to bloom? I still have time though. There's still hope because her normal blooming cycle in the Northern Hemisphere is anywhere between July and September. So there's still hope. And please keep your fingers crossed together with me that I can bring it to its first time bloom. I'm also having a little bit of hope because I find that yes, I do grow outside and yes, I am in Southern Spain, but I, my collection, if I compare other orchids that are doing something elsewhere in the world, be it in a greenhouse or a grow room, mine will bloom a little bit later as per usual, simply because when I bring my orchids out in March, maybe April, but when my night temperatures are warm enough above 13, 14 degrees Celsius, I bring my orchids outside and then they live outside until the night temperatures drop below 13 and 14 Celsius again. My colder nights are obviously then also going to affect when my orchids bloom. And I'm telling you all this because I still have hope. <laughs> but it's also important to understand that even though she is a warm to hot grower, when I do bring her outside, she has no problem in tolerating 13 to 14 degrees Celsius night temperatures. And I just make sure that she gets her one misting a day. My humidity isn't so low in the colder months of the year either. So it's all good in that sense. However, now is the time that I'm really, really busy keeping her happy, keeping her misted, and then just making sure that she's drier in the evenings. In the winter, I have her directly under shop lights. She has about eight to 10 hours of light from the shop lights during the day. And those are the days that are too cold to even take the orchids outside for maybe four hours. I won't do that. But if the temperatures are favorable in the winter, then I do have her outside for the duration of the entire day when the day temperatures are around 18 to 20 degrees Celsius and it's sunny and then she gets full sun in the winter. But on a dull day, I don't miss out on giving her the light that she requires. The humidity is fine. In winter, my humidity can go up to 50, 60%. Okay, she might prefer 80, but at least there's more humidity in the winter than there is in the summer. And that is part of the acclimating process of an orchid coming to terms with the conditions and the environment that she now finds herself in. So I do throw a lot of light at her. Everything else now remains to be seen if that is enough light. Clearly, I don't want to torch my leaves, but if that's what it takes, then next year I will find a place where I can start to acclimatize her into direct sun for an extended period of time. I would have thought, you know, semi-deciduous forests, some light, some direct sun, some bright shade. I would have thought that would have been plenty of light. Maybe I should be focusing more on the fact that there's also mentioned she is found in deciduous forests, which means full light. And then I thought that, you know, my winters, she gets direct sun anyway. Who knows? But that is how I care for my Vanda Vietnamica. Chrysnetia vietnamica. Still no blooms, but I know that somebody has blooms and that is also why we put this care collab together. Thank you to everybody that participated. It was what I call a blitz care collab because every care collab, in my opinion, when and if at all possible, should have some blooms to enjoy. So the channel links of Nicole Diana, Plants and Other Things, The Orchid Saga are in the links of my description below. And one of those three channels has blooms for us to see. Maybe two, maybe three, I don't know. Clearly I don't have them, but please head over to their channels and have a look-see as to who's got the blooms. I really appreciate you taking time to watch my video, seeing a green plant stuck in a pot. Not much to see here. I hope the information I provided was of interest. 
and may be of use if you're considering growing this orchid in an inorganic setup. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.